It's your good pal, Steve-O, from the 4i Radio Network. I'm here to talk to you about a wonderful designer we all know, uh, Revenge Lover. Illustrates and designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, please visit revengelover.com. And just do yourself a favor and tell them Steve-O sent you. I know it really doesn't count for anything, but, I mean, come on. Who's gonna, who are you going to trust? You gonna trust? You going to trust somebody else? No, you're going to trust me, Steve-O. Because, face it, I'm awesome. Unshakable. That's a kid, damn it. That's a felony. Unshakable. Touch me twice, America. The following is brought to you in part by Musings of a Geek, the Four Eyed Radio Network, and the Houston Nerdcasting Collective. You have stumbled into the 90th episode of The War Pod, where we extract, proclaim, underline, divide, and magistrate all of the latest and greatest in media news from the internet. I'm Zach Nanimus. I am Johnny Dim. Let's jump right in. Tonight, we're going to be talking about... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even make you do it that time. You can't, you can't round off the end of a sentence without thinking of walking. Yeah. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, big trailers. Big trailers. Uh, Star Wars came out, and some of the biggest news from the movie actually came from all the trailers associated with it. Different audiences got different trailers and wanted to talk about it. Also, we might be talking a little bit about Star Wars. We're probably going to talk about Star Wars, but we're going to wait. Okay. That's kind of like that's kind of like the piece de resistance. Is that French? Chinese? No. no. I did get to uh, Jay. Jay taught me a long time ago how to say I don't speak English in French, <laughs> and I got to use it the first time today. Nice. Because some kid was trying to sell me something. You know, how kids sell cards for their high school. Yeah, they sell all kinds of bullshit for their. Yeah, schooling. it's like a savings card. Um, he he was like. Mister, do you want to buy this? And I was like, je ne pas anglais. And then I immediately started talking to my brother in English. And, and um, after a few steps, he started speaking to me in Spanish. Uh-oh. And I was like, no, no, français. <laughs> <laughs> like, I did this, too. You know? Like, I'm from the old country. Um. Okay. But, okay, so I wanted to start off um, not with Star Wars. Not with Star Wars. Not with Star Wars. But I want to start off with some of the new trailers. Trailers. Hey. Hey. All right. Um, so this is this is the big one, and uh, I I honestly I'm not I'm not a big like let's go check a blog and have somebody reaffirm what I think. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if this is controversial, but it was a little controversial for me. Star Trek. It's controversial. Is it? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's highly contested. Sure. Is it highly contested, or does everyone not all the, like it? All the bloggers are in a having emotional problems with the movie. So it's so it's widely disliked. I, I have no idea. I don't read blogs. Oh, okay. Well, it's like like I don't even read my own Facebook. I know. You know? Yeah. I, That's true. I, I don't have It's any, a problem. I don't have any friends like No, control. you have friends, you just ignore them. No, no, it's like I don't I don't see in my feed somebody going, "Well, that new Star Trek thing sucks." Right. If you haven't seen it, um I don't think anybody cares at the moment because of Star Wars. No, people care. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're being quiet about it because they know their place. Star, it's Star Wars time. It is Star Wars time. It very much is Star Wars time. Um, but if you haven't seen it, this uh, what's going on with this trailer is like they make a lot of they they make they make a lot of references to and they make a big point of the fact that this Star Wars movie is not going to um, have much to do with Starfleet. The crew is on their own. You right. Know, having, having an adventure and possibly doing something that they weren't asked to do or aren't supposed to do or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and the reason I bring it up is because uh, it's very clear that the creators of the movie wanted to keep people out of the very colorful shirts. Mm-hmm. This is like a desaturated Star Wars. Everyone is in blue pleather. It's right. like it's like a new X Men movie. Yeah, and in going into this, the early stuff about this movie and the direction they were going with it, 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 they made it pretty clear that, of course, it's a new director or a different director than you know it is, right? Well, I know, I know that what's his face, um, Abrams. No, he's a producer, isn't he? He's still a producer. But um, no, no, no. Uh, the 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 redhead headed the British Step guy. Child? No, I get to say that. Oh, by the way, the redheaded <laughs> Britishman, Christopher Nolan. 
No, the guy who plays um, the engineer. Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. What about him? He has a big hand in it, I heard. Really? That's what I heard. But you know how the internet works. That's true. It's um, got all the information ever. I can't speak to that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I do know that the director, the the man helming the ship, mm-hmm. is the uh, is, is the the uh, perennial director of the Fast and Furious movie. That's right. That's right. I heard that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, there's gonna be a lot of fast cars. That's how that works, right? Starships are incredibly fast. Right. They're well, the fastest of vehiculars. It's debatable. Actually, the warp drive technically alters the amount of time it takes for you to move through space. Um, so You get from point A to point B faster. A, a small amount of time right. ha- has, uh, has, um, has which is, passed. Which is what faster means. Your, veloc- your velocity... Eh. Right, but the thing, it's like relative to, relative to the 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 spatial bodies uh, in the universe, you are moving from one place to it's another. More like you get there sooner than faster. It's not. They're very they're very soon, is what they are. <laughs> that, is that what, is cars. that what we're saying? Very okay. Soon. Hey, you want to stop your cat before it ruins everything? No, <laughs> she can be in the podcast. She's literally she's like she is what? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, good job, Connie. She's about to stop the whole thing. No, she's not. Come on, Connie. Oh, the baby. That almost died. Um, oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. Professional. It's a cast, damn it. Ignore the flaws. Uh, <laughs> you can put that to anything. I really can't. <laughs> I sing it all the time. Um, no, so it feels like they're they're making... They were like, "Oh, the last Star Trek was really uh, was really exciting and fast paced, and you know worked as a movie because we kind of we, we drained too much of the um, science elements out of it. Mm-hmm. Now they're trying to get the Starfleet element out of it. What they're trying to do for me is they're just trying to make an action movie that happens to have memorable character names. Just mm-hmm. that, like." Uh, the the last one the last one got a pass for me because it still it still looked a lot like Star Trek you know um, you know and that was like the only pass that it got for me because it completely threw science out the window which has always been very important to Star Trek I think this one's actually gonna if at least what I'm guessing from what I've seen so far in that trailer it feels like it's gonna be more like an adve- like a standalone adventure from the original Star Trek. It's going to be – they're going to be put in a situation. That would surprise me. That would surprise me. Whole- I'm not saying the pacing or anything like that. I'm just saying the, the actual story itself. That cat's going to do whatever She it is conf- – okay. You know what? It, it has to well, – what's Continue. Do? Talk about Star Trek. I'll get her. Okay. So for those of you who haven't really been on either side of the debate or don't know, like, why nerds have a problem with Star Trek, the movies, um, is because – Star Trek was a pretty hard, fast science fiction. You can even go back to a uh, video that was made by Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner in the 80s when Next Generation was first coming out, and they were bragging about the number of scientists they actually had working on the show as consultants. Mm-hmm. You know, They wanted to be very accurate. The things that they were talking about were they were basically taking theoretical science as it was in the 80s and making them realities in the show. Um, and uh, if you saw the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, you did not get the feeling that anybody cared a lot about the science. And that's okay. You know, it still, it still was an exciting and an entertaining movie. That was their primary goal, was to make a fun and entertaining movie. And they, right. they did. It was around the second time. It was around Into Darkness where stuff just stopped making a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, Khan mm-hmm. uh, teleports from Earth to Kronos. Mm-hmm. And it's diff- – there are parts of Earth that you can't teleport to while you're on Earth. Right. You know? So <laughs> that was that was a big problem for it takes everybody. Months to get to Kronos yeah. in a starship. You know? Right. They live you know, even in the logic of the movie, they are a um, they are a rival and sometimes um, violent other species. We're probably not close to one another. You know? So okay, so what? So what's your? Yeah, we're we're going really deep into past Star Trek stuff. What do you feel about this one? And what's your final verdict on the trailer and what you expect from the movie? Well, that's why I brought it up because okay. 
the first Star Trek, you know, at least looked and sounded like Star Trek. And the second one looked a lot like Star Trek, but it didn't sound like it. Right. You know? And so I'm expecting a third element to be gone in this one. And it's not going to look like Star Trek. It's not going to sound like it. It's not going to look like it. Yeah. It's just going to be action adventure time and... With, oh, with, with Star Trek names. Kirk, Kirk and Spock are back, so buy the toy because that word is on the box. There you go. That's, yeah, that's what I'm expecting out of this. Okay, that's not far from what I expect. I, I think it will feel more like a standalone episode of Star Trek. It seems like they're they're removing a lot of the ties to... like. Okay, well, it's being isolated. They're isolating the story, so it's, it's very, you know, it's all... And, and you saw a motorcycle in there so i think they're doing one sure. of the, they're doing one of these like some alien om, omnipotent being it took a bunch of stuff from around the universe and put it on one planet and they're toy and they're playing around with that and they got they got to figure out how to get out of a sticky situation gosh i hadn't i hadn't really considered it but i really hope you're right yeah i think because, that's what's going to happen yeah that would that, that would really suck this back into kind of where it's supposed to be right and maybe even explain the the big costume changes that you mm. see because every like literally everyone is in some synthetic fiber blue jacket and pants. Right. I think I think they may be wearing their Starfleet uniforms underneath them, but it's not clear. It's obvious. It's not clear on purpose. Mm-hmm. They don't want them to look like Starfleet. Yeah, I'm a fan of pants. Um. You know, in Starfleet, you actually uh, any any officer or enlisted person can choose to wear a skirt with their uniform. That's very equal rights of them. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. They made a big point of that in the first episode of uh, Generations. Nice. Or Next Generation. Because actually, I don't think you see any woman in a skirt, but you see at least two men in skirts. So there. That's what we need. We need Zachary Quinto's sweet thighs. America. Get on that. Quinto's American. He he can help. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Um, Next trailer. uh, Okay, you want to go to the next trailer? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, Because I can only take so much Star Trek. The world of Warcraft. Or just Warcraft, I think it's called. Warcraft. Yeah, it's called Warcraft. It's called um, The Burning Crusade. The the Burning... Age of Oblivion. The Burning Age of Oblivion. You're right. World of Warcraft, Yoshi's Island. There we go. No, um, can I, will I, if I lean back in my stone frame, no, I look like a serial killer. But you're also not going to be picked up very well, because your, au- your audio is going to be, your your auditory okay. 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 speaker machine is going to be further away from the intake machine. Okay. I got it. You good? This actually smells really good. Mm. Um, oh, it actually does. I just moved, so I may have stored it with something that smelled good. Like cinnamon toast crunch. World of Warcraft is has always been really good at making uh, trailers for their games. Blizzard. Yes. Um, well, actually, I've seen some bad StarCraft stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much like World of Warcraft is the is the part of that company that seems to produce, like, the really good trailers for me. Well, Warcraft. <sighs> sure. Yeah. World of Warcraft is just one game. It's the most important game that they produce. You know, so it is. It is. Got the but, biggest team, but they've had the most sequels. But they've got yeah. a lot of good, uh, like, like, well, the production value itself is just better in the Warcraft games because they're not they're not necessarily online games. Even though do people play people play them online, but it's a different type of game. They're not rendering an entire, you know, giant sandbox. Yeah. At one time. I feel you. Yeah. Anyway, so those games have better production value and they look nicer, and they have the little the little window where you get to see the guy and like. You're controlling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, why don't you start? Okay. Uh, this is the first time I saw it. It was before we uh, Star Wars. Uh, they had the trailer for that. And I felt better about it than I felt about it before I watched it. Uh, I was expecting something to be like, I love you more today than yesterday. That sums it up. It sums it up. But it, it actually looked like a fairly good action movie. It's got the, you know, the story we... They're teaming up. It's the sides that are they're not supposed to be teaming up. It's like the Alliance and the Horde teaming up against a bigger evil, it sounded like. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. My bad. Well, the, my bad. No, there's a, there's a, there's a subsection of the horde that wants to team up with the alliance, but the rest of the horde is mad about it, and the rest of the alliance is mad about it, mm. and so it's like Pocahontas in a way, or Romeo and Juliet. Real but, women have tusks. Yeah. Um, but similar storylines in those two, Romeo and Juliet, and that. Actually. Oh yeah, and that 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 kind of sums up the problem that I have with this trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll say this though, the, the, it, especially what blew me away was actually I felt like the actual CGI and the graphics were done much better than I thought they would be. That's true. Yeah. Um, it did kind of have that. It did kind of have that problem that you run into a lot with uh, movies that do a lot of CG characters, and that's. In order to make it real, mm-hmm. they do they they pretend that they're doing shoulder shots by when they render it on the computer. Yeah. They take the perspective of the user and move it around a lot, mm-hmm. um, but all the characters still look really, really like clean. the The filming doesn't look jerky because the filming didn't happen. Right. You know? um, it still has that problem, and it's nitpicky. They obviously still get the point across. Um, but ultimately, you were comparing it to other stories, and I think that that sums up my problem with it. It doesn't look like it's going to take uh, risks. No, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's super be predictable. Pretty, pretty right on, pretty right on the money. Not a lot of twists and turns. It's like um, watching Avatar. And honestly, they got like they, every movie does this. I don't know why I'm surprised every time. Um, I get the I get the feeling that uh, Game of Thrones doesn't do it. And uh, I know the Lord, of the, Ring, the Lord of the Rings didn't do it, but that's I, probably why people like them. They don't try to make the characters relatable. And in the, in the World of Warcraft movie, they look like they're trying to make them relatable. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're, the, things that they, the things that they say are – like they're in a British accent, but they're like kind of modern. Yeah, where, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think one of them's like about to um, – they're about to jump off of something and catch a griffin, you know, and he and he's and he's just like, well then, let's do it, you know, and just yeah, yeah. jumps off. And I don't know, like, if it's a knight, let him be stately, right? You know? um, I will say this: I feel like I saw the least from this trailer than I did from other uh, from other trailers, mm-hmm. which actually weirdly makes me excited because because some unknown. It's not only that, it seems like it seems like they didn't take a lot of time to purposefully create elements in the movie that were meant for trailers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Not like it's, uh, it's less contrived. Huh? Is it less contrived? I wouldn't say that. Um it's just it, oh, you mean like overall when they don't do that? I'm saying yeah, like like it's less contrived in this because they weren't trying to specifically make a trailer that that's supposed to like like they just took stuff. Is that, is that that sounds like what you're trying to say? I won't I won't be able to know that until I see the movie. For sure, it may be that just this movie is empty. You know, it doesn't that, have it doesn't yeah. have any moments <laughs> to highlight. But um, it's it's the thing that makes me the most optimistic mm-hmm. is that they don't have those moments that are clearly uh, that 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 are clearly there to sound cool. Right. You know what I mean. Um, however, the big the big battle scenes the of the grand scale battles they look pretty by the numbers um the flying looks pretty by the numbers i was happy to see the design of the costumes that re- they really be the big ass pauldrons that they were in the world of warcraft i was I, happy with that they 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 embrace it to an extent because they're actually not quite as big they're very exaggerated yeah, because in the, game. the ones you wear in the game are like 300 pounds each i know but this <laughs> one they're early shots of this movie um, I remember someone had made this meme where they actually, exa- they actually put them. They did one shot of the of like one of the humans and mm-hmm. the alliance, whatever, and mm-hmm. and like, oh, and this is what it should look like. And they took the same thing and all they did was blow it up. Just the armor. Yeah. Like, this is what it should look like. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but they're not going to do that. I will say least realistic movie. Yeah. Trailer that I've seen so far because yeah. I've played the game and women don't wear clothing. Why? That was weird. Why would they? Yeah, they they can't they can't move they they can't move thusly yeah. in armor or leather or linen. They or can't. Yeah, they really can't. Really, even if women are covered in too much water or paint, they they just freeze up. They freeze up like an egg. That's yeah. what I call them. I call them little egg people, and they're all dressed up. It's like get out of that dress, egg. That's that what you say? Apparently. Heard, okay, I've never heard you say that. 
it's hard to it's, yeah it's hard to it's hard to war in your war your craft and in your armor no they they took they took the liberty to dress even the uh the female barbarians so uh so good on them you know good, good job actually i think the male barbarians are wearing less yeah it's Women tricky in the easy it's tricky with the barbarians because they do especially like in D&D traditionally they wear a little bit less armor so they can move around a lot easier because they're supposed to be like mo- more mobile than than most fighters they also don't smelt right you know yeah. Their, their weapons are stone. Their armor is leather. Leather, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, they, you know, they just they they took all of the obviously overly sexualized, over sensational, and ridiculous parts of the game, you know, and updated it for a movie that's for everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, not the game's not for everybody. You know what? And, uh, but the online the online fe- the online female market is uh, is wa- is smaller than the males and waning. Yeah, this this particular thing. Why for that reason? This particular thing doesn't really bother me as much, but in most cases, when people when and we'll get to this a little bit, this but we'll get to a little more of this in the in the uh, later in the show. But I usually hate it when somebody makes something more for everybody. The thing about like like sexualizing female characters for that purpose, like for the purpose of sexualizing them, is that it makes it uncomfortable to a degree. Yeah, you know, especially like a movie which yeah. you're supposed to enjoy with people, and you're just sitting there and you're like, right. try to look mad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, yeah, in this particular subject, I, I I don't have this particular that point of view. I'm just saying in general. Okay, yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that and that's probably right. Uh, and yeah, we are going to talk about that when it gets. To <laughs> you know what uh, I'm talking about. Age of Apocalypse. He's blue. Damn it. He's the first mutant. <laughs> can, we call, okay. can we call this episode on Blanky Blank? It's a blank, blanky. <laughs> if I could get that across in text that, with, that, with that. Just in parentheses to the tune of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Okay. <laughs> um, I could just get, it's a podcast, damn it. Okay, anyway. Oh, Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse or Ivan Ooze Returns. That's exactly what I thought. Is that like a big thing online? Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone, especially when they, when they linked the first trailer, you know, at uh, San Diego Comic Con, people mm-hmm. filmed it and, rele- and leaked it. Yeah. A lot of people were like, that's Ivan Ooze. I didn't know that that was a thing to call him, but that's yeah. exactly what I thought as soon as I did. Yeah, it's Ivan Ooze. Um, from and, and and you younger kids won't even know what we're talking about. There was a Power Rangers movie once. There's going to be another one soon. But back at the uh, in the '90s, there was a uh, a Power Rangers movie, and the in, the the antagonist was named Ivan Ooze, and and he was he was purple, and he looks like Apocalypse. He was like a skinny purple. Um, not he had a, he had a he not had a little, onslaught. Um, he had a little goat thing. A little Doomsday is what he looked like. Doomsday. Yeah, but because he had like he's got he had jagged bits all over him. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He had a nice jacket with like a with like a cape. I didn't say he wasn't clothed. I said he looked. I said he had jagged bits on him. I don't think he did. Uh, but either way, like uh, the the forming of his head and stuff was all very crest like. And in this apocalypse, you know, he's literally wearing something that covers basically the Jean Luc Picard parts of his head, mm-hmm. just the sides and back, but not the top. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know, and the thing is, is that no, no. I think it's really his 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 doofy human face. Yeah, he's like, a doof. It's, it's it's one instance where special effects would have done right. Yeah, you know, rather than minimalizing it so that we can see more of the human elements, mm-hmm. there he just looks. It looks like his power isn't his own. You See, know what I mean? He's wearing like a robot suit. Yeah, you're, you're okay, but you okay? You said CGI, but to be honest, it could be done without CGI. There was, there have been, and people have shown it ever since they released the the, the, the first leakage of the, of the <laughs> first leakage <laughs> of this of the first the, leakage of the apocalypse. Yeah, the first <laughs> leakage of the apocalypse. Oh boy, yeah. The four adult garments of the apocalypse. Either way, what I'm trying to say is, people actually put out their droopy, slappy, smelly. And <laughs> tapes coming undone. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So, so there was, uh, there have been cosplayers who have actually done <laughs> what? If they were the four adult diapers of the apocalypse, actually, their original name still makes sense. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> famine is clean. Uh, <laughs> then there's a uh, pe- uh, pestilence. 
Um, what's the, what's no. well, one of them's death? Oh, pestilence, death, and the last one, war. <laughs> I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> so there's been actual cosplayers who've actually done a very good apocalypse, and he looks fucking great, and he looks like he's straight out of the comics. Did he? Did they have to perform in the mask that they? No, but produced? well, I don't know. I, I didn't see. An, but I that's didn't important. see. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't see a video. I only saw a still shot, mm-hmm. but it looked fantastic, and I'm sure that Hollywood could figure out a way to do that. Well, yeah, but you know, with their budget monies. But the thing is, they they could have they could have done it in in, in either way. And still made somebody that looked intimidating, and I'm not intimidated by the apocalypse in this. Um, but more than that, I would have been able to forgive all that from this trailer, and I do want to make clear that I am judging a trailer and not the movie. We'll see what it's like in context. Mm-hmm. Um, but the writing seems to be intended for like a Saturday morning cartoon, you know? Because, like, they're very – in the trailer, they give, like, two or three big concepts, and then they, then they just say them in plain English again. It's, uh, it's like he's one uh, – it's like they have uh, – civilizations have paid homage to uh, multiple entities, Ra, um, Krishna, Disney, yeah. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, what if it? What, uh, what if it was all one? You know, and then and then it's like they think Apocalypse was the first mutant and the most powerful one. And they're like he's always had four the helpers with him, always. And then somebody's like, like from the Bible, and, <laughs> you know. And they don't. They're not letting us put any two things together for ourselves. Right. It's it's all in very plain English. Which, when it's done and reiterated back to back, not only does it, um, not only does it insult the intelligence of the people who are watching, you know, because even even for kids, it's not difficult to figure out. You Mm -hmm. know, this movie obviously isn't for the you know three to eight demographic. You know, the children that watch this movie are going to be tweens and teens. You know, Um, I don't even know what rating it is. Probably thirteen. It's probably PG thirteen, maybe. Probably or Um, PG. I really doubt it's PG. Yeah. Um, but like, not only does it ta- not only does it uh, insult uh, insult the intelligence, but it also makes things seem less important. Like it's kind of like in the world of Warcraft, when I was saying they're bringing it down to they they bring it down to a modernized version of it, which makes it seem more pedestrian, less important, has less less oomph. Less, uh, what did Bane say? Let's not... Ceremony. (laughs) Let's not stand on ceremony. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are obviously in allusion to the Bible, and he has four. Oh, and in case you didn't know, Batman, he's going to name them after the biblical character. Tom Hardy would have made a very good apocalypse. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) Uh, Like, I want to say, you can't do it so quickly, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um... The thing about this movie is that I am going to watch it and I'm going to love it, and I'll tell you why. All of my favorite X Men are in it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I just I I I'm Jubilee, not, Jubilee, the Nightcrawler, and the Archangel. Beautiful. And they're all young and fit. Uh, I I, I guess I wasn't going there, but good on you. I yeah, <laughs> they're all they're all really attractive. People were trying to explain to me who the new Jubilee was, and like they couldn't quite. Remember what they saw her from. Mm-hmm. She's from the Sweet Life on Zach and uh, of Zach and Cody. Nice. That's where she's from. She's uh, she's Ms. Tipton. <laughs> the owner. I know she's Jubilee. Yeah. Nice. Well, you know, like Ashley Tinsdale. You know, she yeah. branched off into yeah, doing yeah. a lot of different stuff. Sure. Um, and she's from that show. She's actually one of my favorite shows. Um, uh, Phineas and Ferb. Speaking of my favorite stuff. Yes. Um, Because that's what you were talking about. I watched a lot of Independence Day growing up. You watched a lot of Independence Day? Yeah, the movie. Wasn't there a series? There may have been talks about one. I don't remember actually seeing one. But I saw the movie a bunch. And I'm excited about the uh, sequel. The sequel looks good. And there's a lot of familiar faces in it. That's that's what I was going to say about this trailer in in particular was that the... um, Although the, the the movie itself, I can't tell if it's going to be good or not. 
I mean, trailers can be deceiving. I'm always skeptical of a good trailer because mm-hmm. you never know what the movie exactly going to be. The movie is going to be be like. Um, we'll also talk about trailer trickery later in the in this podcast as well. Just want to oh put that teaser okay. in there. Um, yeah. Anyway, but this one and um, what got me excited about it? Like, I don't know if it's just nostalgia getting because they put th- at least three familiar faces in the trailer. That are from the original Independence Day. Yeah. And that it's like nostalgia just kind of wipes over me. I'm like, I don't even care how good the trailer is. J.J. Or- Abrams, his dad. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, I, I'm, I've been... Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, his dad, the guy from uh, Taxi. Yeah, the guy the guy who played the president. Um, no, no, no. The guy... The guy I'm not I'm talking was, about someone else. Oh, yeah. Bill Pullman. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the... Yeah. And Jackie Chan... We'll I wish. I punch wish. Punch aliens. Another one of my favorites from the nineties. Eat noodles. Yeah, that's not racist. Jackie Chan's characters always eat noodles. I don't know why. And eggs. And what you know? In one movie, he was actually a uh, a, a celebrity chef. And Is I remember that? that that scene. He had a girlfriend, and he, she was in the stands in the audience, and he goes, "Don't get egg on your face." And he threw a scrambled egg on her face. That's a thing that actually happened in a movie. Maybe that's just what he does in his dojo. <laughs> you know, when he's teaching the kids yeah. like to prepare them, he's like, "Don't get punched by me." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's the he's he's the master of Don't the... disappoint your father. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> just life advice before he whips your ass. <laughs> God damn it. I'm glad you enjoy that so well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, of course, he's he's the master of the impromptu weapon. Um, yeah. So he's very dexterous. You know, he broke a record um, for a uh, of outtakes on a particular scene. Yeah, I heard that. It was a, it was, I believe it was with a fan, like one of the... the yes, you're right. Yeah, because yeah, he, um, it's the trick, it's the trick where you spin it back to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. that That's a toughie. I've tried it. Have you? Mm-hmm. We should have you just do that over and over and over until you can break his record. Hold on. So the point is to mess up more? I for a while, I, and I then you're going to try to get it right. No, but the thing is, like, the, the record is for outtakes. Right. I can make an infinite number of outtakes for you. <laughs> right. So it's a fairly – it's one of those records that, that nobody even tries to break, but there you could go. break it just by trying. Anyway, so that's, that's the Independence Day movie. I'm sure that in order to break this record, um, I, it has to be outtakes for a feature film, which means that we will have to make a short film around it. Yeah, around this around this uh, process. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be uh, Jean Claude Van Fan. Perfect. And it's just going to be, and all you're going to see is the one time that I got it right. Yep. And that's the whole <laughs> With over 14 hours of a bonus footage. Not in theaters. Independence Day was the mo- was the movie trailer that I actually looked at the people around me and was like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Yeah. You know, especially since I've seen Independence Day um, and reviews of it as an adult and, you know, it's very easy to point out all the problems with it and why its grand scale is kind of an illusion. But I was thinking... Um, I was thinking about looking back on movies um, and, like, overanalyzing them and figuring out, you know, all the problems logically and stuff like that. I don't know that that's fair. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's fair to do because, you know, a movie's kind of like – a movie is an illusion. It's like – so it's like a magic trick. You know, its job is to fool you into believing something long enough to entertain you. Right. Um, And if you enjoyed the movie when you watched it – why tear then it they, apart then they later? Pulled, then they pulled, they pulled the trick. Right. You know, it worked. They got you. Yeah, they're, they're, and they're usually their point, usually their goal is to make money within the first year. So. Yeah. It's, it's also a timing thing. It, so, you know, but, you know, thinking back to Into Darkness, Star Trek Into Darkness, that whole teleporting thing, I spot it right away, you know? Mm. So, or, or at least that, or at least by that night, you know? Because, weirdly, movies entertain you long after you're done with them. I remember the night after Star Trek, was it was, it was all kind of still and weird. Like, life after Star Trek, or Star Wars, 
like change change it changed. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Talk about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, life after life after Star Wars was weird. Like you talk about the new one. Yeah. There okay. Was all, there was all this anticipation, all this build up, and afterwards it was like, I know I'm supposed to be obsessing over something, <laughs> but what? Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> Um, now it's funny you're talking about that going back and, and analyzing the movies you, you know from your childhood or whenever um, because I watched the original trilogy uh, 4, 5, and 6 of Star Wars just days before we saw um, Force Awakens mm-hmm. and I found myself overanalyzing them big time sure and those movies are flawed were they science questions that you were coming up with? no more just um, plot holes mm-hmm Mostly, yeah. Um, my brother's mu- my brother's much more invested in Star Wars than I am, mm-hmm. um, and like for for a while because like he's so upset with the prequels and anticipating this movie so much that you know it was kind of like that hush mm-hmm. that what do I do now that I've seen it? And so I wanted to talk with him about it a little bit, and he was like, "I need to collect my thoughts. Yeah, you need to process this." Um, and um. I remember telling him, I was like, you know, I guess the important thing to remember is that the original Star Wars wasn't a masterpiece. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it was unusual. It's time. Yeah. And that's why it's so memorable. Mm-hmm. And they are good. They're right. perfect. Right. Um, so, yeah, I get that. What did you, what was, what was most notice, what was most notable about, you know, we'll talk about it in a second because there's one more, there's one more trailer that we got to get to. No jokes. No jokes. Don't joke. I'm serious. Dead serious. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah, of course. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, my God. So I actually I did not see it in theaters. Johnny just showed it to me. Um, it was like they did the X-Men trailer again, but... But correct. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, like I told Johnny immediately after this, I was like, it was like... The X Men were trying to make a Ninja Turtles movie, yeah, but they forgot to put the Ninja Turtles in. And yeah, everything about this new Turtles trailer is just perfect, you know, from from a from a Turtles fandom standpoint. Um, and the most important thing that they got right was Casey Jones. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Well, it's he looks not, too clean to me. He looks too clean, but you know what? He doesn't look. He doesn't look like Jason Voorhees. The way that he did in, like, some of the first art to come out. Oh, yeah. Because it looked like they were trying to build him up so that he would be on par with the new Michael Bay turtles that are, you know, um, incredibly strong and so so heavy and weighty and powerful that they even they even crack cement by falling on it. And he needs bigger biceps. Casey Jones? Mm-hmm. His point is that he just grabs the stuff around him and <laughs> hits people with it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I feel like he needs to be at least a you know, maybe you know, bigger neck muscles and bigger biceps. Scrawny guys matter. <laughs> Scrawny lives matter. <laughs> and, and I didn't like his mask per se. I thought it needed to be a little damaged, like scrush you know, uh, scuffed up. I would have preferred that. I, I like him being more like borderline hobo, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean, and I think that's what he was in the original comics. I think he was literally homeless. Right, which I didn't see. I, I but I remember him from the the movies in the uh, it was the eighties. They came out in the eighties or nineties. First one came out in eighty nine. Yeah, so it's, it's late eighties. Well, eighty nine is like my go to year for stuff to. But come I think out. you're right. I think I think the other ones came Actually, out. Actually, no, in the, I think in the it was ninety. 90s. I think it was ninety. You could you could be right. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's I, I remember him from that, and he looked he, he had some rough edges to him. This. Stephen Ar- Steve Arnell Arnell uh, just looks way too clean. I don't like it. And, and plus, like plus, a, he, seeing him in anything kind of pisses me off because I really do not like Arrow. That's the Arrow. Is that what's going that's on? That's Arrow. That's the Green Arrow. Oh, so maybe Oliver Quinn will actually show up in this one because oh. there's a lot that they're playing for laughs in this movie, <laughs> and they don't play anything for laughs in the Arrow, which yeah. is why it's dumb. That's not the only reason. The other reason is his bad acting. <laughs> That's the other reason. Uh, the other thing that I really appreciated seeing um, was uh, Casey Jones doing sports. That's cool. You know, in the movie, yeah, he, it was just kind of, it was just kind of, I found this stuff. This right. is a legal thing to carry that I've, I can beat you to I've death with. I've got a basket full of sports equipment. Yeah, and this one, he's like, he's like, he's shooting the, the puck at people, yeah. and he's skating away from the tank. 
And um, I mean, no, no, no. He was going. He was straight away. He was uh, uh that was Rocksteady. Oh, it was just, it was Rocksteady was after him. Oh, okay. And he was skating away from Rocksteady. Yeah, and you call that call that uh, campy and stupid if you want to, but remember that we're talking about the Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, you know that's the important thing. Absolutely, and it's silly, <laughs> and and it's it's making me remember why I liked the Turtles when I was a kid too. Mm-hmm. It, it, it reminds me of that. So also, um, th- I don't know if it's like a technology thing, but. Um, Michael Bay, I don't know who's literally directing this one, but Michael Bay. Uh, um, do you know our, you know our sign off right for when I do the uh, Broken Frames show, right? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, I don't Tune know, in if you want to know. I'm not even going to say it right now. I, I don't know if it's um, I don't know if it's technology getting better, but he seems more brazen with showing off his CG characters. And, you know, that's important. The whole, the biggest problem with the original Michael Bay Ninja Turtles, the 2014 Ninja Turtles, was there was no Ninja Turtles in it. Mm. You know, they were the things that came in and did the action in between forgettable scenes with April O'Neil and uh, Paul Rudd. What's his name? It's not Paul Rudd. I know his name. This is, I just can't think of it. And I like that actor. Yeah, he's good. Um, but just, and it's, it's not the other guy I'm thinking of either. Which is uh, the guy who plays uh, Job on Arrested Development? They look this. They look similar. They have similar features, but it's not him. No, that's the same guy. No, it's not. I guarantee you, it's not. I guarantee you that Job from Arrested Development is in Ninja Turtles. I guarantee you. Not even joking. Oh, you know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking of uh, Tony Shalhoub. No, wasn't the bad guy? <laughs> wasn't the bad guy? Yeah. He looks like him. Yeah. That, That's what I was thinking. Okay, no. I'm, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I'm talking about Finwick. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, the yeah, helper. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? It's going to drive me nuts. I know his name. Me too. <laughs> All right. Edit break while we fucking look this up. Will Arnett. Will Arnett. That's it. No. You looked it up. Don't do that. I did. You, hey, you did it too. You, no, no, no. You were trying to do the whole... Uh, the whole I was, I was trying to... Cut to, we suddenly remembered. No, you looked it up. A- anytime I try to act like <laughs> like th- something didn't happen, Zach calls me out on it. I'm po- I apologize. It's weird. We're, we're, we're supposed to just be us for the show. I prefer to lie to America. He j- prefers to tell the truth. Dark side, light side. Um, founding Fathers, U.S. government. Oh, oh political. Ow, 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 ow. Really, just more the American Dental Association. Or Mary Kate and Ashley. What's the name of the good? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's such a mean thing to say. What's the name of the good Olsen? Uh, there's. Uh, wait, you mean the, was the one that's not the twins? Yeah, the Scarlet Witch. I don't remember her name. Okay. Yeah. I like her. I, has she been in stuff? Or do you just know her from looking at Entertainment Tonight? She's the Scarlet Witch. No way. Yeah. Yeah, that's an Olsen. Yeah, the third sister is one is is one of the Olsons within the same generation. In fact, a sibling to Mary Kate and Ashley. No fucking way. Promise, promise. Okay, hold on. We're doing this. We're doing this live. So anyway, what's your final thought on the TMNT out of the shadows thing? Trailer looks great. The fact that we're uh, we're dealing with the son of the Shredder, and we're actually directly dealing with it instead of like tagging on uh, Will Fincher. As the Shredder. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, um, which is, you know, that's straight out of the comic books, which is fun when they do stuff like that. Um, because the in the issue one of Team and T, they're actually killing Shredder's son, is what they're doing. Um, hmm. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's really cool. I, and uh, the attitude of the movie, using, uh, using Tricky from... The guys who did Tricky. <laughs> oh, that song? The rat, yeah. Who walk around, who walk around, that's Tricky. Uh, wow, that was the whitest thing I've ever said. That's Tricky. That's Tricky, y'all. Holy shit, that's Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, Liz Olsen. Motherfucker. Yeah. Um, I think you probably told me this before, and I still didn't believe it then. I told you the show. I don't believe it. Yeah, I know. I don't believe it now. <laughs> um... But, okay, that, that's how I feel. I think that they're hitting the right beats and they're really going to redeem themselves, even though 
Uh, I say redeem myself because it's popular to dislike that movie. I find it entertaining. Zach, what's next? I w- I'm going to Star ask Wars or top it. three? That's a toughie. That's mm-hmm. a toughie. Mm-hmm. Star Wars, because I don't think we're going to get to our top three. Yeah, we will. This can be a long episode. We didn't do an episode last week. I guess. Okay. Star Wars talking about Star Wars. We saw a movie starring a guy. You know what my favorite Star Wars quote is? Hashtag Black Stormtrooper? No. <laughs> what? No. And that, um, okay, I'll just say it. Han Solo ain't had no sex with Princess Leia in the Star War. Who said that? Props to Craig Robinson. Craig Robinson. Yeah. Who's Craig Robinson? It's a black guy from The Office. Oh, okay. Yeah, he plays a keyboard. I know him as Daryl. Daryl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Daryl from The Office. Um, no, he uh, he said that in Zack and Miriam make a porno. Okay. And they're doing this a porn spoof and and uh and they're having han and leia have sex in their porn spoof sure and he's like han so ain't had no sex with prince and leia in the star war <laughs> oh i love it that's, that's the first right. time i've ever heard anyone say star war referring to star wars really yeah the first popular media that i saw that in was actually arrested development yeah which nice. he gives it to um what's it um hi, his name is actually high low that's right yeah yeah i can't remember i can't remember what they kept calling him are you talking about the adopted Asian yeah. son? Um, Is it Ponyon? I want to say. Yeah. Anyon. 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 Um, yeah, she she gave, she just gave 50 bucks to Anyon, and she was like, here, go see a Star War. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> so, Star Wars. Um, I feel or, like, I feel like or I, fan service the movie. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned you mentioned after our screening that there mm-hmm. were that you had you you took exception I to did. the movie. I did. Um, which uh, which is kind of why I'd kind of like to start this one. Go ahead. Um, this worked. You know, this was this was pretty much what I was looking for out of a Star Wars film. Um, everything was uh, was fun, fast paced. Um, Character uh, character interactions um, char- character interactions were moving. Character motivations were clear. Um, special uh, most of the special effects were great. Um, and I remember, I remember I was uh, I was talking to uh, Patrick. Mm-hmm. Don't call me Pat Patrick. Mm-hmm. And um, I was talking to him about who's a who's a great dude who does our uh, intro song. Yes, I just wanted to give him some more credit for that. Go ahead. He. Um, we were, I, I, was, I was talking to him about what makes what makes a story good is when it's elemental, is when you can take elements of the story, or at least the core themes, and anybody can relate to them. Mm-hmm. And I got that front to back in this movie. I remember reading the opening scroll, and it was like it was like uh, Luke is Luke is missing. Oh yeah, there's gonna be spoilers by the way. Yeah, spoilers. big time. Um, Luke, uh, Luke is missing, but people are looking for him. Also, there are bad guys who ro- uh, who rose from this. And even when they said something exotic like Jakku, they explained it very well. Mm-hmm. And it was all in very... Uh, it, it wasn't muddled down with unnecessary details, and it never mentioned anything that they couldn't explain or we didn't have reference for. And it, it just worked. Right. And and, and that, that pretty much describes the movie. Mm-hmm. When you look at something, you know what it is. And on top of that, that thing that you're looking at is being entertaining. And uh, it completely redeemed itself from the prequels. And uh, it felt very much like Star Wars. The pacing, the way it looked, the grittiness to it. The, the prequels were very clean. And everything, this world looks, uh, this is actually something that Red Letter Media says a lot, uh, lived in. Mm-hmm. It's very clear that people... It's very clear that characters were supposed to have used these things and been a part of these things. And some things are broken, and some things don't, and, and, and some uh, some things are too alien for you to relate to. And they address it, you know. Mm-hmm. And everything has a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just loved it. I loved the whole thing. But I'm really curious as to why you want to tear this movie down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I someone uh, I had I had 
done a little bit of this tearing down, or at least mentioned that I did have issues with the movie um, on Facebook. And um, uh, a friend, actually a mutual friend uh, of ours. Um, Mitch Van Marlin? No, 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 no. Friend uh, of Joe Joe? No, you know, you know Robert, right? <laughs> Robert Tafoya? No. Never mind. Don't worry about it. But Robert it, Parrish? Yes. Yeah, I know Rob. Okay. So he he uh, he questioned me and because uh, someone else. What? Shout out to Rob Parrish. Oh, shout out! I thought, you said, doing, sh- I thought you said shut up. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? You shut up about that Robert yeah. Parrish. We don't do that here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. So somebody else. Uh, uh, I'm not fetching that goddamn <clears throat> pen. Somebody else uh, said, uh, agreed with me that there are issues with the film. And uh, and then Robert was like, "What is wrong with everybody? Why can't you just enjoy the movie, right?" And and I'm like, "Well, here's the thing. I enjoy this mil- this movie on two different levels. I did enjoy the movie. It is a good movie, even great movie. I'll even agree to that. Mm-hmm. But I also enjoy tearing things down. Okay. So I'm going to enjoy it both times. Okay. Um. So and I, and this isn't a complete deconstruction of the movie. Like I'm not going to tear it down limb from limb, you know, because the movie was good. I, like I said. My my biggest issue with the movie was that I felt like it was fan service the movie. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where people do things, especially directors and writers, they do things to old properties, to movies just to make them for uh, – they, they adjust things for the masses. They do it because they want to please everybody. They want the, the most amount of people to go see this movie so they can make their money. Sure. And, and sometimes those things piss me the off. Origi- the original Star Wars was not absent of that. Right. But the problem was that this was too much of the old Star Wars. This was the this was almost almost beat for beat a new hope. Sure. Again. Yes. And and uh, now the things that they did to modernize it were good. Some of it was a little flashy. Like I think some of the stuff like you you almost said like like most of the CGI or whatever, most of the special effects were good. Um there were some yeah. some CGI characters that didn't quite feel real enough. It was really the characters um, of uh, uh, Gra- of uh, Gra- uh, Supreme Leader Snoke. Yeah, Supreme Leader Snoke is a completely CG character, and um, I mean, he just did, he just didn't have. Sh- mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm referencing Gollum because it's the same guy who did the mocap, mm-hmm. and um, it was one of those things where, like, Andy Serkis did the mocap for just the face, mm-hmm. uh, and the rest of his body you can you can so clearly tell that some animator did it. Right. Um, and, you know, if you're an animator, like, I know exactly, you do your jobs well, and I, but I know exactly why things look the way they look, and I was actually able to pinpoint with one of the characters, it's the uh, the lady who runs the trading station. She's orange and tiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she owns that bar, or whatever it was. <clears throat> and then she had some, she was one of the characters that, that kind of uh, um, spoke to me as far as this, one we're talking about her, I think she wasn't quite real enough. Yeah, especially when they got because they are real close to her face too. Well, the thing the um, the thing that I noticed, and I noticed it by looking at her, mm-hmm. is uh, it seemed it seemed evidence to me that lots of uh, when when we move our faces, we do we're trying to get some information across, but we're pretty economic in the way that we do it. Mm-hmm. We don't think about eye twitches mm-hmm. or nostril flares or getting our cheeks moving and stuff like that. Um, but animators do. Mm-hmm. And so if they go through a few frames and, you know, there's not a lot of motion, then it kind of feels boring mm-hmm. in the creative process. Um, at least that's what I assume because CG characters are always in motion. They're always doing a little something, mm-hmm. you know, and that's exactly how I point them out. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, but another thing, okay, so, so... – let me say this about it. Let me, let me, I'm not going to be all negative here because there are some things that were very striking that I that I loved, like the the scene where Han Solo confronts Kylo Ren. That scene was absolutely spectacular. Yes, great, great scene. Um, I like that they like most audience had a sense of exactly how this was going to work. Mm-hmm. But once again, spoilers. Uh, I want to mention it one more time because this is probably the most important one. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, everybody had a pretty good feeling that this was going to end with Kylo killing him. Right. And they were able to play with that expectation mm-hmm. up to the very end. Yeah. Even going so far as to allow, as for Rin with open hands, 
give him the lightsaber and Han has it mm-hmm. in his hand. Yeah. And it's almost like if Han had pulled it, had, if Han had decided it. not to trust his son, right. if he had seen it as a moment of weakness and decided just, yeah, he might be alive. Right. That's not what happened. Right. Yeah, you could you see know? it coming from a mile away, but still, it doesn't it, matter. It played with it, it really. It doesn't matter. I remember I was literally doing this. I was like, pull it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, no, as soon as he said his name, I knew how that scene was going to end. But um, at the same time, I was like... It was yeah. He did it very well. It was directed well, written well, uh, acted well. Mm. Um, the guy who plays Kylo Ren, the thing is about Kylo Ren. Uh, I wish I had not ever seen the show Girls. It's not a show I even like. I watched it because Jessica wanted to watch it, mm-hmm. and I watched a couple episodes. And he is in that show, and he plays a very creepy kind of uh, over. Uh, um, I'm going to almost say I'm not addicted to, but he's he's focused much on sexual activities. Okay, and so Is that a I kept I don't know, uh, but I kept expecting him to ask people to suck his dick, um, and <laughs> and having that that loom over that character pissed me off. I wish I had never seen that show. I could I could definitely see how like how that could mess you up. Like if this yeah. if this movie had been made. In the in the eighties, and yeah. Ted Danson played exactly. it. Exactly, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I could I could I could definitely respect that. Personally, the the acting choice, like as soon as he pulled off his mask, and he was so young, and he's got kind of a big nose and long like nineties Superman hair. Yeah. Um, like I wanted to laugh, but even in that moment, I was like, oh, he's just a scared kid wearing a mask because he thinks it makes him look like his idol. Right. You know, and I immediately knew that character. That character was that character is so great because he, he, people can relate to him because he's he's basically a, a one of these he's like a rebel, um, you know, to his parents and to to mm-hmm. everything to society, and he know and you have that you can see it in him that he kind of knows that he shouldn't be who he is, but he can't go back because yeah, because then he'd be wrong, right? Yeah, it's this bratty little kid, and he has tantrums. He does in and, the movie, and, and he's and he's also ill-equipped for the yes. for the stuff for the uh, for the situations that he puts him in. This movie has a lot to do with him doing his job poorly, right? And a lot of one-upsmanship, uh, one-upsmanship between him and um, General the, Bragg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which is awesome because you can see that's gonna. It's not bad. It's not Bragg. It's um. I don't know. It's whatever the other Nazi guy. Yeah. Which is uh, actually what I really like because actually uh, George Lucas took uh, borrowed a lot of. Um, uh, look and aesthetics from the Nazi party um, as far as the way that the, the, the Empire looks and the way the Stormtroopers look. And that's where he took the, the name Stormtrooper from. Yes. And um, I th- and with the First Order, it's even more so that. And it's, it's very it's – very, um, and, and I kind of like that because it, it's relatable. I and mean, people see an obvious parallel. I got a bit of a um, – I got a bit of a North Korea vibe. Yeah, especially because they they now are literally calling Snoke supreme leader, mm. um, and also the idea that stormtroopers are taken from birth and stuff like that. Yeah, they're, they're literally taking a toll on their population. Which I really love that they actually spoke to that, like about the clones, mm-hmm. clones, because that was that was, people have been talking about that ever since um, um, they knew this movie was coming. It's like because there's been this disagreement, like, well, they obviously weren't clones in the original trilogy. Yeah, and then it's like. But and there were clones, and at one, at one point, so there is a transition. They actually speak to it, so there isn't an argument. Mm-hmm. You know, they kind of settle that disagreement. Sure, um, which is cool. Um, My big problem, yeah, actually has to do with um, what they didn't talk about, and that's the Republic. Uh huh. The Republic is way undercooked um, in the first, and you know, we were, we were talking about it earlier in kind of talking about how it would have been difficult to actually give um, give the audience some perspective on the Republic and stuff like that. They did it in episode four in about two minutes. And, and I, I remember you, know? you talking to, after the movie, you talked about this. And, um, and after thinking about it, I think that – and I know this doesn't help for this movie by itself, but I think they're going to spend more time on the Republic in the second movie. They could have established it. In thirty seconds, yeah, they could. As long as they waited at least ten mm-hmm. 
to to fire uh, to fire off. I just call it Death Star uh, Death Star Two. I don't know what they call it in the movie. It's just Death Star Two. They had uh, they had a name for it. Yeah, but I don't it's called, it's called something Star base. something. I thought it's no, called, it's called something base. You're right. Yeah. Um. So Death Base. Death Base. That's right. it, yeah, that's what Death, it's called. Death Base Two Thousand. Um. No. They if they if they had taken thirty sec thirty seconds of establishment, mm-hmm. you know, to just uh, to maybe some hearing or something like that, where some uh, where somebody was like, "This republic has been uh, has been crum- uh, crumbling since the fall of Palpatine himself." And uh, every every day we lose more ground to the first order, you know. So just something, something. and then ten minutes later, fire your weapon. Mm-hmm. I would have just a little pathos, but instead, in the span of about thirty seconds. What they should, what they should have spent on the Republic, they introduce the Republic and shoot them all dead, <laughs> all of them. They they even make a point to say, with this stroke, we kill the Republic, the whole thing. And I was like, who? Because like when we when we started dealing with the First Order and stuff like that, all of the assumptions that I made because of the grand scale that they exist on and stuff like that was that. The rebels failed. Mm-hmm. Everything that they did was for nothing, and we're looking at the established governmental entity. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought throughout the entire movie, and I actually had sort of an emotional moment about that. You know, that made sense and struck a chord. Introducing this republic and then destroying it immediately meant nothing to me. Sure. So that was a, that was mishandled. Luckily, it's only thirty seconds of the movie. Right. <laughs> um, one thing, uh, one other negative thing I wanted to say, and this actually is, I'm borrowing from you because you actually said this um, right after we saw the movie was I thought there was too much humor. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and that that always gets me in a movie like this. And I feel like this was another this was another play to appease the public at large. I honestly don't think so. Yeah. I think that this is. Um, I think that this was Abrams letting actors, um, you know, because actors are creative people, and when you allow actors to do what they're going to do and actually give the performance in the way that it makes sense to them, Mm -hmm. it's noticeably better. When you're directing them very specifically to make sure they get all their lines exactly right and stuff like that, it comes off robotic. Right. John Boyega obviously has a very uh, has a very robust personality. He's obviously very is obviously a very funny person, mm. but they needed to pull him back just a little. <laughs> like it, there was one particular thing, um, but he's talking to BB-8, and um, I don't think it was supposed to sound like this, but. <laughs> Um, the, um, he's talking about lying to, uh, to Ray about something and, and he's like, droid, please. You yeah, know? yeah. And yeah. I could, I could almost hear a Z snap in there, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure that it wasn't supposed to be like that, but it was, there was just almost too round on the please maybe. Right. To, uh, something like that. What really got me was when they, uh, when they captured Phantasma. And he's like, that's right. I'm in charge, Phantasma. I'm in charge now. It's me. I'm in charge. Yeah, Phantasma. <laughs> And yeah. it, was, it was like it's a little much, like Ducky from the Neverending Story. Yeah, well. <laughs> looks uh, questionable to me. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. I got one more thing before I go into talk about the the uh, trailer for Star Wars versus the movie because that's something we teased earlier. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, we did briefly. Or the, we, were, I, uh, we called it. Uh, I don't remember what we called it. It was a trailer or something. Anyway, so why the fuck? Was Han Solo so surprised about the goddamn crossbow? Chewie's crossbow. He acted like he'd never seen it before. And I don't understand why. It was new. New to what? That's Chewie's new weapon. From when? He's always had a fucking crossbow. Yeah, it used to shoot green. It also didn't used to blow up people. So it's obviously a new one. This is dumb. I know. I don't. It used to shoot green bolts. They were noticeably green, and they didn't blow up anything. So, so Chewie's been modifying his weapon behind Han Solo's back. Maybe he bought a different one. Those two are attached at the hip. Maybe he bought a different one. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't. I didn't like you it. You know, you know that Kashyyyk's, um, Kashyyyk's greatest import, uh, sorry, export is technology, right? You've told me this. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of bowcasters out there. Whatever. It's silly. 
They just wanted they just wanted another excuse to do a little silly moment like that. Like like that's another thing I didn't like about the Star Trek trailer trailer back backtrack a little bit. I hate those stupid little one liners. It's always the same goddamn thing. Like when they teleport and he grabs that chick and they barely make it and they land on the floor. Let's never do that again. <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> they did that in the second. God Batman damn it! Too. I hate it. <laughs> Actually, that. That that probably beat for beat is the same scene. Probably because they God. because they fall on each other, you know. Yeah, and it's like and it's, it's the same thing with the we talked about this recently with the uh, the latest Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice uh, trailer where it's like uh, when Wonder Woman shows up, uh, is she with you? I thought she was with you. It's like the same. As, you can hear like the record yes, scratch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh oh. It just takes it just takes me out of it. Okay. All right, the trailer oh, would sorry, say... This is, a, this is a new trailer, so that would be... Somebody once <laughs> told me... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, anyway. Use of sabotage in the Star Trek trailer. Appropriate in context. My brother told me about it. He was like, you're going to hear some rap music. And I was like, oh, they're going that way with it. But then, the, like, the trailer goes out of its way to explain it, and it is reorchestrated, and it works. Yeah. The, uh, what I was talking about with the what I call the trailer switcheroo situation. Yeah. And I actually fucking love this. And it's, they, there is misdirection. There's bait and switch in the trailer. Okay. And it was, it was orchestrated and thought through, I think, very well. I think they did it on purpose. We thought Finn was going to be a Jedi. We thought Finn was going to have force powers. Um, lo- in, in fact, and was it you who said who said that in? Um, uh, yeah, it was you and your brother disagreed in that your latest Knights of Wind video. I thought that there was going to be kind of a um, kind of force buddies team up. Okay, you know, um, kind kind of the kind of the way they almost went with the original trilogy, where you learn Leia's got it too. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, by the way, I still dislike that they told us. She should have accidentally force pushed something, and that's right. how we knew. Right. Um, that's kind of that's kind of the direction I assumed that they were going with it, rather than him literally being Abu from Aladdin, mm. who like tries to do all these great things and can't. Right. Um, yeah. It was effective. Um, I I had the benefit of a brother who obsesses over Star Wars, right. and he was and, and like he was he was like freeze framing in the trailer. He was uh, he was like, look where Ray is in this shot, and look where um, look where Finn is, like off to the side, out of focus. She's in the middle. She's wearing the same colors that Luke first right. did. You know the the soundtrack is swelling anytime she comes up. Right. So you know, and it was very compelling and it was very accurate. Right. So I I I can't relate personally because <laughs> i had like a star wars expert <laughs> in my face with imagery <laughs> theming yeah um but that, i guess a, a lot of other you know people who didn't watch the trailer with with uh, with a fine-tooth comb i guess uh-huh. um i had the same assumption that i talked to like oh finn's gonna be the one he's he's got the lightsaber obviously it's gonna be him he mm-hmm. but um but i love that and they even they, they even did it in the movie like leading up to before they even she even tries anything with force powers or whatever. We all assume that it's going to be him. Um, they, at least they they help they, they help that that dialogue along. Even as a fan, I was kind of hoping not before I had uh, before I had any clear cut ideas. I was hoping that this would be a movie where the protagonists um, don't have the force, and it's about a normal person. Mm-hmm. Doing the amazing things and right. saving the day, right? Um, but you know, it works. Uh, it really works because of, and I'm sure that I'm sure that she lost some uh, some feminism points for it. But we see a lot of weakness in Ray, and Ray has to Ray really has to grow into this warrior um, that she that she becomes in the movie. Um, yeah, but if we're comparing her story so far and Luke's story in A New Hope. Um, I much prefer hers because she's much less of a whiny bitch. Very true. I don't like Luke. Mm-hmm. He was not my favorite character as a kid. Right. Um, I really Star Wars was one of those things where I couldn't point to a character and say I want to be like I want to be like that. I was it a Han was, Solo fan. You know it, well, that 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 didn't quite do it for me either. I needed the ensemble. I mm-hmm. thought that no part was as powerful as its whole. 
Right. Even though I couldn't articulate that as a kid. Right. But like the the scenes against Darth, like you want when team. When I had my when I had my toys, you know, it was always like Chewie's shooting from over here, and obligatorily Luke's got the lightsaber over here, and you know, here comes the next wing, you know. My my battles, my GI Joe, my GI Joe characters are always did very dramatic, very uh, personal scenes, and they were very singular. Yeah. Like like one, they were twin brothers or something, mm-hmm. you know. And it's this one quest, you know. He has to avenge, he has to kill his brother because he's evil or whatever. Mine, that's what mine always were. Mine always, slow motion battles. Mine always had throwaway frame ups. Oh yeah, it was like, well, we got we got to go to the drug cartel, and it's got to be in a different place than just my room. So they're in the jungle, mm-hmm. you know. And so it, it was, it always had to be framed in some realistic way. Sure. Um. But yeah, I wasn't a big I wasn't a big fan of Luke. Mm. You know, and there were things. Um... <laughs> Sorry, I was just remembering because we, like I said, we watched the movies, the, the original trilogy, before us going to see it, mm-hmm. the new movie, and uh, even Jay Free uh, in Return of the, No Empire Strikes Back. Yes, when he reveals, when Darth Vader reveals that he's, he's Luke's father, mm-hmm. just that scene. He says, no, <laughs> it can't. She was, she was she was laughing at it. It was fucking hilarious. Oh no that that one worked. That one worked. He overacted a little bit. He was standing over a bottomless pit in a on a planet made of gas, uh-huh. and he just had his hand chopped off, and learned that his mortal enemy was relay was a blood relative. Yeah. I think he gets some slack. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's a pretty. <laughs> He's not like, well, that's just inconvenient, I would ex- now, isn't it? No, I would expect. No, I would expect him to do. I would expect him to break down into tears and cry and be a bitch about it. But in this one, he just overacts and yells dramatically. And you know what? I also found out by rewatching those movies, Darth Vader does his no, you know, from the prequels. He does that no actually uh, during uh, one of the original movies. I assume the third one. Uh, I think so. I can't remember which one it was That's now. That's the only time where you actually see him in Dire Straits. I gotta look it up before, again. Before then, he's never in trouble. Yeah. Never in serious trouble. Right. The only times that Luke barely sees Oh, and, no, 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 no. Yeah, but unless it was uh, when the original Death Star blows up. He could have been like when he got... When he got because he, he, oh, his, his TIE true. fighter got that's shot. That's true. He lost no. an eye. <laughs> <laughs> just doing somersaults. Okay, but anyway, we got a top three to get to. Huh? We do. We do have a top three to get to. But you said you said that this this could be a slightly larger episode. Yeah, let's do it. And there is there is one thing that I want to talk about. Do it. And um, this is something that everybody that I saw the movie with you had questions about, and I'm sure that people are arguing about it online. Sure. Um, Ray beats Kylo in a lightsaber match. Um, and but, cl- yeah, clear, clearly, clearly, the logical problem here is someone who has had a lightsaber for who's at least had a lightsaber for a long time, and we know he has the opportunity to spar. But we also talked about how inept he is, huh? We've talked about how in- inept he is. Yes, and I think that's that's one thing that a lot of fans um, don't, are overlooking, don't appreciate. Yeah. Or you know, there's there, there's a logical problem mm-hmm. with it, um, and to the logical problem of uh, her beating him with a lightsaber after having held it. Actually, this is her first thing that she mm-hmm. ever did. She never even practiced. Um, to, to me, I think I think a metaphor that can be used here is that he's kind of like the spoiled brat who is trained in fencing, mm-hmm. but you put him into like a longsword battle, he doesn't do so well. Yes. In a street fight. And that's, that's an element. The other element is the goddamn force. Boom! It can do anything. Yes, it can. You know, in this movie, it stopped a blaster bolt. Which is awesome! Yeah, that was a really cool... <laughs> all the force usage was really cool in yes. this movie. It felt... What, what, it was, what was missing in the prequels, I didn't even realize it until I saw it done right in this movie, was um, weight. Everything feels heavy. Mm-hmm. When he grabs somebody, it's like they've been bolted to something. Sure. When he stops, like, he didn't even actually stop the laser blast. It was begging to get forward. Yeah, you know? and when he does this little mind trick, when he goes into your mind, it looks like he's actually poking and violating your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, one thing that was really subtle uh, was um, he uh, Ray's, Ray's got her blaster out. And um, he rins it down to her side, and when uh, there you can see it in the camera, but there's there's a vibration to it. 
Sure. You know, like he can't keep it in the right spot, or it's difficult to do so because everything has a weight. To yeah. It. Um, and yeah, the Force. For those of you who didn't know, um, one of its most one of its most powerful aspects is intuition. Jedi's are literally Spider Man. You mm-hmm. know, they can just do things, and the Force can guide them in directions that help them in any situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole point of this is that. He's not great with the Force. He's not cooked, you know? And Rin, I'm sorry, Ray is the big awakening. Right. You know, she's the next big thing in the Force. She's hot shit. Yeah. And so as far as the logic of that is concerned, the Force works in mysterious ways that no one can explain. So there. I don't know what to tell you. Also, fence, also fencing boy. Some people are just good at fighting. Some people. Yeah. So there, there's also that too. I've Absolutely. always contested as a as a martial artist. Uh, I've always contested that um, if you've got no experience, um, other than say uh, the, other than say street fighting, and uh, you just happen to have you know a good tolerance for pain, quick reflexes, um, and you go into a dojo and you beat and you and you beat high ranking members in that dojo guess what you're good at karate mm-hmm. because that's what karate is who is better at beating up at, at beating up people sure you know so <laughs> you know it's it's possible to be naturally good at something um final thought final thought mine yeah this this movie is good great even uh enjoyed it but I wish and I hope that now that we've gotten the uh, pleasing the fans out of the way, I hope that they take a little more liberties with the next um, in the in the series. They have to. There's yeah. no two ways about it. So um, I'm excited more about the future than I am for the present. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. That's the bottom line for me. But I did enjoy the movie. This movie was great. Um, uh, but I did say in the past that the rehash would not bother me. You know? I think the most important thing to remember about this movie is that it is a sequel. Right. You know, and sequels operate under con- like a, a loose knit set of rules, mm. um, and everything that they everything that they did rehash, um, they did so in very creative ways. Darth Vader is not the end all be all badass. He's a scared kid. The um, the the Death Star. Yeah, except for that, the, all they did was make it bigger. Huh. Uh, the de- uh, the Death Star, um, it, it runs thematically the way that the Death Star operates in this one um, w- was interesting to me mm-hmm. because because uh, it, it eats suns. It, it, it eats suns, and it, that all goes to the theming of dark of the dark and the light. Sure, um, it, when it's when it was daylight outside on this uh, on this thing, it would literally was a planet. Um, when it was daylight. You know, they knew they had a shot. Mm-hmm. You know, all the all the good guys were like, "Yeah, it's still daylight. We can do this." And as the uh, as the uh, as the bad guys got closer and closer to uh, to the fruition of their plan, the sun kept getting lower and lower and lower until mm-hmm. darkness. Right. And that's just good theming. You know? Right. And it worked. You know. And that's the exact point that Han Solo died. Yeah. Which was awesome. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Yeah. Very very. The well. cinematics are great. Yes. Anyway. So I guess I guess that's that's actually a booming review. We both like it. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> um, Gorsh. 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 Hi three. Hi three. You haven't done that in a while. Huh. And now I think it's time to say goodbye, everybody. We love you. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 2015. This has been another great presentation of the Four-Eyed Radio Network. You can catch more shows at foureyedradio.com.